Good morning and welcome to 7 at 7. So glad to have you guys with us this morning. It's going to be uh, a great day. I'm excited to give an invitation into the Word this morning. Um, before we dive into that, I want to invite you into the chat. Say hi. Let us know that you're there, that you're watching with us, how we can be praying with you and for you, and how we can be celebrating what God is doing. Yeah, so I have a testimony. Janine said, praise report. I'm praying for God's direction on a new position at my job, and He has provided. So thank you for joining with her in prayer. And remember to keep joining with others in prayer. As you see those prayer requests, it makes such a difference to feel that community and to know that we're standing with one another. Absolutely. I think I forgot to start with the fact that I'm Pastor Daniel, and this is my amazing wife, Amanda. Hi. So if you're new, that's <laughs> who we are, and you are jumping in for uh, a little bit of encouragement, confession, and prayer. And wanting to invite everybody into the Word and challenge everyone to get into the Word a little bit today. Romans chapter 12 Verses 1 and 2, um, it, it's this amazing thing about presenting our life, presenting our bodies before God yeah. and giving him all of us. And he goes, then you get to choose in verse 2 to either be conformed to this world or be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. And if we're not intentional, we end up being conformed. Now, I was talking to someone the other day going, to be conformed happens from that which is external. To be transformed happens from that which is internal. And so when I just let the pressures that are around me shape me, I am conformed to them. But when I choose to fill up on God's word and to choose to let that fill me, I am then transformed from the inside out. And it's this really, really powerful thing that we've been talking about now for a couple of weeks, really. Uh, but I want to invite you into the word into letting it transform you. And it is our prayer that with 7 at 7, that people develop habits of, of seeking God daily, yeah. of spending time with Him. And I love what we're doing, but it's not supposed to be all that your time with God is. Yeah. And I want to invite you uh, in. And, to, and today's invitation is into ch 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Um, it's a really nice little chapter. So if sometimes the challenges are long, this one uh, is a whopping 13 verses. We call it the love chapter. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and it's an amazing chapter, but as we go through this, there is this description of what love is. And it is very different than the world's love. <laughs> very different. Yeah, the world's love ends up so focused on itself and what it gets um, and doesn't look at all at what it gives. Right. Um, but God's love is so different. And God's love is the love that we want to fill us. So as we're letting God's one of the ways that God's word shapes us is when we let God's word define what is a win. Yeah. When we let God's word define what we should look like, what we, what we think of as, as really as the goal. Um, that sets the direction for our life. And letting it define what it looks like to be full of love, what this love should look like, is just huge. So it, it starts out, and I'm not going to overview the whole chapter because we have not that long. But uh, <laughs> verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It, do, uh, it does not insist on its own way, nor is it irritable or resentful. It, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. As it goes on through this, and it even talks about some of these different spiritual gifts that are amazing. Yeah. And goes, if you have all of the gifts that everyone wants to look at and wants to admire, but you don't have love, he goes, you missed it. You're just a clanging symbol. I think our, our culture, our society, wants to elevate all of the things that people look at. Yeah. And the Bible wants to go, I want to elevate the love that you walk in. Yep. And so I want to invite all of you to look through this list, highlight those, mark those, find a way to mark them in your Bible, and then to go, which of these do I want to work on? Yeah. Which of these, God, what is it that I want you to do in me? God, which of these can you mold me into your image? I get so powerful when we do and we go through going, all right, hey, I am, I am doing awesome at this one. I need to work <laughs> <laughs> on this other one. And when we do that and we go through and go, all right, and then we begin to confess, love is patient. Well, you know what? Now, I am patient. I am kind. 
I do not envy or boast. I am not arrogant or rude. I do not insist on my own way. And sometimes you, you might say some of these and you're like, yeah, that's true. And you're like, I do not insist on my own way. I, I don't. <laughs> um, but if, if you'll say that, and I want to even challenge you to confess, to go through and confess, not just love is, but now, all right, God's love has been shed abroad in my heart, so now I am. Yep. And as we confess these, it begins, your body begins to respond to, you know, you are defining who you are. You are defining your goal. You are defining. And in our life, it probably won't take long until somebody gives you a chance to be irritable or resentful. Right. And you're like, but I am not. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just so powerful. We begin to, to meditate on this word. And that's really what I want to invite you to do is to meditate on it. And then as you're doing it, as you're sharing, as you're, as you're meditating on it, if there's one that stands out, share it. Um, you can, if you're sharing it on social media, hashtag Res Life Church. But if you just share it with a friend, text somebody, email somebody, have a conversation and go, hey, here's what God's working on in me. I'm going to work on not being rude. I'm going to work, you know, and as it talks about, you know, not holding um, on to grudges, not being resentful. You know what? I am working on forgiving and letting go. Yeah. And even writing those out and putting them on a little sticky note or putting them, just writing, handwriting it and sticking it somewhere where you're going to see it all the time to keep confessing it and keep working on that and finding other scriptures throughout the word that will also encourage you in that area and posting those up as well so that you can keep reminding yourself. Is such a powerful thing. And that's our invitation for you for today. All right, got some confessions for us? Yep. So we're gonna do our confessions. If you wanna repeat after me, I cast my cares on God. I cast my cares on God. Because God cares for me. Because God cares for me. I choose prayer instead of fear. I choose prayer instead of fear. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. But power, love, and a sound mind. But a power, love, and a sound mind. I am strong and courageous. I am strong and courageous. Fear has no place here. Fear has no place here. For God is with me. For God is with me. I live generously. I live generously. Overflowing with God's love in all I do. Overflowing with God's love in I all I do. I put God first. I put God first. And he takes care of me. And he takes care of me. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful. My prayers are powerful. And effective. And effective. I don't know if you can hear Esther, but she's confessing as well. And God, I thank you for each person who's joining us, that you would give them a revelation of your love, that you have poured out for them, that they could be filled with your love, with your grace, presence, and power, and they could overflow with it, that your love would be so on display in us that it would draw others towards you, that your love would be at work in grace and power, God, molding us and then that we could see your word confirmed with signs and wonders, that there would be an overflow of your love, power, and compassion through us. God, that we would see bodies healed and restored, that we would see marriages brought back together, that we would see forgiveness, that we would see relationships restored as you've given us, as you've reconciled us and given us the ministry of reconciliation. We ask that you would have your way in every part of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. Have a great day. Yeah, we're so glad you joined us. And we'll, we'll see, see you, guys, you again soon. See you guys tomorrow.